Hi everyone, this is Yogi Cameron. And I'm Yogini Jema. And this is Inspire Living, where we answer your most pressing questions. Hmm. So the question is, how do I not set myself up for disappointment? Hmm. How do we do that? <laughs> well, if we have expectations, we're always going to have disappointment. Correct. Right? <clears throat> Those are the two opposite sides. Now, if you limit your expectations, um, not in level, in terms of quality, but in terms of quantity. So if you have expectations about everything, well, then you're going to be disappointed continuously, mm -hmm. right? Your uncle comes around to the house, he talks a lot, you expect him to be quiet, he doesn't be quiet, you're going to be disappointed, right? Simple uh, example. If you do that with everything, but you just say, look, I can't expect everything to be my way. I can't expect to have control. I can't expect these things, right? I can expect myself to do better. That's something. Then you're also at some point also setting yourself up for failure because if your level is too high than where your, if your expectation is higher than where your effort level is, then you're going to set yourself up for disappointment as well, right? Somebody wrote on Facebook today, we were, we were doing a fast and they said, I, I failed, you know, <laughs> and, and I said, no, you didn't fail because you did some things great. Focus on those things, not on the things that you think you failed. Mm -hmm. That person just set their expectations a little bit too high and their effort level was a little bit lower. So these two have to kind of match. Well, so that's an internal expectation. And then we have the external <clears throat> expectation. I think that's the first step is to to understand your expectations. If they are based on an external circumstance that is out of your control as life is, and if you are expecting something to happen on the outside to bring you a feeling of happiness or of fulfillment, you are setting yourself up for disappointment right there because that's something that you can't control. In the yogic practice, we stop that outward journey and that outward expectation uh, you know, way of thinking, and we take the journey of the inward empowerment journey, you know, where we say, if I want to feel this, I'm going to either take the steps to reach that fulfillment and that satisfaction myself, or I'm going to start to awaken those feelings within me of joy, of fulfillment, of love, of peace. That is the potential of mm. this beautiful path, is to awaken mm -hmm. all that you seek outward for inside. And then you don't have to seek anymore. And actually disappointment and expectation kind of just fades away. And you start to just walk and, and feed yourself what it is you need mm. and when you need it. Mm. It's, it's kind of like having a, you play tennis, you play sport, you play it for fun, right? But you still try your best and you have a great time and you're like, oh, that was amazing, mm. right? It doesn't matter if you won or lost, right? That's not part of it. But if you brought it in that little bit, which was like, hey, I'm going to try my best and everything, but we've got to win mm. for me not to feel bad, sure. then you're, you're edging towards the disappointment, right? Mm. Now, if you do, then accept the disappointment, right? So there's two ways of thinking about this. Go for it, have lots of expectations, but have lots of disappointments, but accept it. Or limit your expectations and you'll distance yourself more from the disappointments and then you can be more peaceful. And it really has to do with who you are, right? I'm, I'm a little bit more mellow, so my energy doesn't want that, too many expectations and too many disappointments. I don't want that. I wanna be a little bit more chill back and more relaxed about it. Whereas somebody else who's fiery, they're kind of fired up on all cylinders, they're okay with. Disappointment, expectations, uh, I won, I lost, I won, I lost. They kind of thrive on that. So well, it's a more rajasic is what we call in the yogic mm. and Ayurvedic sciences. It's a more rajasic, a more fiery spirit, a more fiery mind. I'm much more rajasic in nature, but I don't expect to get fed by anything on the exterior. I just keep creating and creating mm. that experience that I need to feed off of. Yeah. So. You have a lot to go on there. I would watch this again because we've we've come at different angles, <laughs> many different things. You know, these are short bites of content. So 
we really give you a lot in one go and sometimes you're going to miss it so i would watch it again and see what really pertains to you not all of it pertains to you so don't try to do it all but just zone in on this is about me yes they've spoken about me and take that and use it and you'll see you'll have way less disappointments or you have more disappointments but you'll be able to accept them and feel good about them mm. so if you want to learn much more about this and get deeper into this uh, come and visit us on inspireliving.co membership that's where we get deeper into these topics mm. and where we speak about them longer and where we practice them because a lot of these things that we talk about need yogic practices to bring them into fruition <laughs> so namaste happy practicing and we'll see you soon namaste